Holy cow. So while this thing starts up in one pole, right, it um, only runs well on choke. So we're going to address the carburetor now and clean it. Need some cleaning because it's got Earl everywhere from it uh, being tilted on its side and crankshaft rotated, right? So there's going to be some Earl in the carburetor. Actually, it didn't touch the uh, air cleaner, which is good. And air cleaner is okay. Not that it has any fuel in it, but I'm just going to shut off that fuel. will shut off anyway. But there's practically no fuel in there. I'm surprised it even ran. It's 10 millimeter, 3 bolts. This top one here is basically to hold the cover in place. This is a long bolt that holds the carburetor. Oily. I don't like messing with uh, Honda carburetors because it's actually kind of a pain. Oily due to the rotating of the crankshaft while we're messing with the blades on an incline or uh, a tilt, and that just uh, leaks some earl out of the carburetor. Gasket is good. It's dirty as all well around here. Yeah, gasket's good. Stiff, rigid, rubbery also at the same time. Flexible. And make sure I remember how it goes. So it does. I'm just going to hold it like this and put it down. Ooh. You know what? I feel metal in here because it's stuck to my uh, magnetic um, ashtray. Let's see. So there's two linkages. One over here, I'm just going to rotate this like that and try to get that out. The gasket moves along with it. It's such a pain. You know, this gasket over here. I'm going to just leave that there right now. It takes quite a little bit of contortioning to get this out. The little short one came out of a hole already. That's a Z bend. This one has to come out first. Come on, bro. off. Maybe it might make it easier. Remember where that went. Oh, it's much easier now. There we go. Back up a little bit. Let's see. How did that go again? Son of a bitch. Did it go like that? Did it go like this? I don't remember. I'll have to go back to the videotape. Check it out. Another Z bend over here. And here's the fuel pose. And there be the carburetor.
I don't know, but I don't think that gasket's very good. But as long as it sealed this hole here, that's what's important, see? And I hope I remember where all this stuff goes. This was here. Okay. Remember, it's this one, not that one. That one goes here. The thin one goes in the little small, tiny hole. Alright. So I'm going to take this apart now. Okay. Got a 3 8 or 10 millimeter. Take the bowl off. <clears throat> it's not bad. It's got some black stuff in there. But it's not bad at all. It's probably why it ran, right? But there is some stuff clogging the main jet probably that doesn't allow it to run right on choke. Uh, run right off a choke because it only runs on choke. So there's an orifice or a hole that's clogged with something. Or it just may could it could just be these little black thingamajigs. See these black things there? Could just be these black little things that are um, blocking the emulsion tube as the fuel's going upwards, you know, into through the main jet. So it's blocking the holes. Any little thing like that could just block that hole, you know. So that could be it. You could use brake cleaner. Or carb cleaner, or the Lucas Oil contact cleaner. You could do whichever. And uh, basically, just this one's almost done. Ski. So I just want to get the crevices to make sure that there's no black stuff in there. So that that's pretty clean right there. Okay, I'm gonna put that somewhere. Here's the pin that holds the float. Lift the float out. Pretty clean. This over here. The needle just came out. And inspecting it, it looks really good. The rubber thing is pointy, not wilted. Smooth. It's very good. Just don't lose that. It's so tiny. This bowl nut is not a jet, just a nut. With uh, Briggs and Tecumseh, there's a little hole, and the nut actually acts as a jet. Not so with certain Kohlers or Hondas. Inspecting the gasket. Crap, where did that go? I hope I remember where that goes. You guys remember, right? All right? You can tell me. Leave in the comments where that goes. That's pretty clean. There's a there's a uh, main jet in there that's that you can take out. Remember what I did with the impact? That's healed pretty nicely. It still kind of hurts on certain days. It's a little bump there actually, like it's still healing, like calcium. You know, when you have a trauma to your whatever bone or hand, whatever, it uh, heals back pretty nicely. But you could feel that it's kind of hard on the inside. There's a calcium uh, deposit in there or something like that. 
That's okay. I'm not a hand model. I'm 50 years old already. But I want to try to get that main jet out to clean it. And I'm not going to use an impact. I've learned my lesson. So I've totally learned my lesson. I will never use an impact to get that main jet out with a screwdriver with the impact because I've hurt myself already, you know? Well, maybe if I had like metal gloves, I would. But anyway, so I'm just going to try to turn this. It never works. Ooh! Could it be that it's turning? I never have this kind of luck. Ever. I always strip it. Always. These things are so funny because even though you loosened it, it, it almost like goes halfway and then it gets to another threaded part and it won't come out, you know? Like it's doing right now, see? It, it's loose, but it won't come out because it has to make it to another area where it's threaded. Almost like use gravity to try to turn it again to get it on another thread, which it's doing now. I'll push it back out again. Oh, you like that product placement, huh? You like that? It's all part of marketing. Airtime. You guys are just staring at those bottles, staring at the brand, staring at their logo. The logo is now engraved in your mind so that the next time you go to Walmart or whatever auto parts store, you recognize that logo and that brand. You've seen somebody use this product and it successfully works. So instead of you normally buying something else, you'll say to yourself, hey, you know what? Henry at Mowers and Blowers uses nothing but Lucas Oil products. He has good success with that. I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get a bottle. So that's why certain companies sponsor certain people. Is that um, if you understand marketing, which I do, um, I went to school for marketing. That's how you do brand recognition, branding, product placement. You guys understand what I'm talking about. Some of you marketing guys. I almost have this. It's, it's a pain. But you know what? I'm not an in, under any deadlines like Gas Monkey Garage. I do this at my own pace whenever I feel like it. And that's why I'm happy doing what I'm doing now as opposed to having like a real job or anything. I've had real jobs for 25 years, you know. Unless you own your own business, always working for the man sucks. You know what I'm saying? So not that this is a business, but I enjoy what I do, you know? Look, I got it. I'm just going to use my fingers. There we go! We got it out! We got it out. I'm so happy. And it's clear. <laughs> For all that. It's still clear. So I'm just going to take this um, twisty tie from a bread you know, bag. I'm just going to go in here like that. It's not completely straight, but that's okay because sometimes the grooves help clear the sides. It's not even really going in. Okay, so I'm not going to use that anymore. I've got these uh, torch tip cleaners. These are cool. I got them in eBay. Um, I forget how much, but they're very cheap. And that hole is really small. It won't even go in the hole. It won't fit in the hole, guys. <laughs> All right, you know what? I'm going to have to. Uh, I'm going to strip the other side of this bread twisty tie thing because. I need it, I need it straight, like that, see, there we go, see that, 
That's what you want. That's good. Take some contact cleaner from my friends at Lucas Oil. Boom! That's it. That's all you need. Put the product placement back. So now this main jet is clean. Just don't lose it. While I have this out, I'm going to take my contact cleaner. The reason why I like this contact cleaner is it works just like carb cleaner, right? But this does not blow up your gaskets like carb cleaner does. And it also dries fast and fully cleans. And uh, doesn't leave any residue either. Oh, as they say, either. No, I don't see the stream coming out the other end, which you should. There we go. I see it. Spray it into this hole. Boom. To this hole. And by the way, this stream is so strong, too. Ooh, look at... What was that? That's the other jet that popped out. Oh, my God. I almost forgot. You see how strong that stream is? That stream was so strong that it blew this jet out of the emulsion. That's insanity. Now I wonder which way it went though. Did it, does it go in this way or did it go in that way? See, that's a problem. I'm gonna have to figure that out. I don't know which way it came out of. Did it go in this way? Or did it go in this way? I think, it, I think it's supposed to be this way. Because this one has horizontal holes. Let me match that up with this one. Hmm. You know what? Now I don't know. I'm not sure. I think it makes sense for it to be this way because that's the other part of the top there. Yes, it is. It's this way for sure. Okay? Because this is the part that you can see from where the butterfly flaps are. So it goes like that. Okay, okay. Now, uh, as long as I got this out, I'm going to blow this contact cleaner up here. I also have these torch tip cleaners that have little bristles on it. So look, you can get the holes really well here because when you push forward like that, right, like that, and then back again, it kind of rubs on the holes on the inside too and cleans those. Now I'm going to individually do that. These are so small that there's no way to get them. I'm going to use these torch cleaners with the bristles. So right around the small hole area. So if you want to test it, put your finger over here, blow it into there, and see if you see fluid coming out of the little tiny ones. You do. See that? You see fluid coming out of the little tiny ones. Now you know the jet works. You make a mess, but you're... You're making sure that the jet works. All right. While I have this out, I'm going to deplete the rest of this in there. I 
going to replace this jet back in there, the main jet. I'm going to put this one back in. Now it's on that second set of threads. Okay, good. Now, uh, see that? That's another thing I have to take out. And the only way you're going to get that out is you take the idle screw. First, let's just see where the idle screw is. If you look at the other side, I can see maybe it's on the third thread. Okay? I'm just going to remember the third thread. This is a pretty good carb clean video I'm doing here. Okay. It's just a nut. comes out of there, see? So when I stick this into there, comes out of there, see? Now you're sure that that's clear. And put that back. Now you put the idle screw back in. There's no jet in there, so it doesn't go anywhere except the other end. Remember I told you that it was on the third thread, so I'm just going to turn this into the third thread that's sticking out. You would have to adjust this anyway when you have it running right for the idle. That's right. That's about right. Give or take. Like that. It's a fuel adjustment. I always break these. This thing is like a um, keeper, keeps it there. Prevents you from turning it any more than that. It won't come off. Damn it. See? It won't let you turn, you know? You have to take this off. And I don't want to break it. So should I just leave it and not clean that? You can see the other end of it there. You know, I've broken I've broken these things before and I don't want to break it, so I'm just not I mean if this runs lousy still, um I will try to take this off a little bit more, but I think it's a pretty clean carb. Just to help that out. You can see the tip of it right there. I'm pretty satisfied with the cleanliness of this carburetor. I think it'll run pretty well. All right, so here we go. I'm going to reassemble it by putting the float where the needle is. Here's the needle. 
onto the float. Match it up to the hole. Drop it in there like that. Put the pin There we go. Let's go test. Oh, so it's like this. Okay. And when it's like that, because you know the fuel goes right in there like that, right? This fuel draining nut is always pointing forward. So you'll know that's how it goes. You turn it this way, it's like that. Three o'clock position when you're looking at it that way. Doesn't really matter, but if you were anal like me, you care. Here's the bowl nut with the gasket on there. It's in good shape. Ten millimeter wrench. That gasket though. That gasket in the front. And where's this from? Oh, okay. Alright. Alright, I got it. I got it. Alright. I can't tell. I'm going to have to go and stop this video and look again because I want to make sure I have that right. I'm thinking it's like this. Not like that. It's going to be like this. Could also be like that. Alright, I'm going to have to check. So it was inconclusive how that went. But I'm thinking it's like that. Why? Because I'm just looking at the evidence here, right? If you're looking at the evidence, see how you could see the shape of the of what was on here and the exterior elements of how it dirt how dirty it is and it's clean here. Well, if it was the other direction, it wouldn't be dirty here. It would be a more square shape of a of dirt. But as you can see, this part here shows that it, this is all dirty, you know, from the outside elements. So it could only go like this. And being that you see the gasket over here is missing, right? And it's right there. You know that this is how it went, like that. So if this goes like that, then this goes like that. The fuel nozzle pointed outwards. It could only be that way. I'm sure I'm right. I'm not changing this gasket because you know why? You only have to seal this hole, okay? And the gasket around this hole is still good. Not only that, I don't have another gasket. <laughs> Alright, so now the hard part is connecting this thing. This thing goes... Should I do this one first? Damn it. No, that was not that. This is going to be like that. Okay. That was a choke lever. That was a choke. Yeah. 
this one here that goes in here. This one here goes in the little hole. That ought to do it. Methinks. Then you line this up. Oh, there's a gasket there too. And it went like that. So this goes like that. See what I mean about Hondas? Paint in the ass, man. Just line this all up perfectly like that. Almost impossible. Then you got this. Gotta put the fuel hose back on here first. Oh man, what a pain! You guys that work on Hondas, man, kudos to you because you never get me to be a Honda tech. It's ridiculous, completely ridiculous. Damn it. If you guys want, you can go to the bathroom or get yourself a sandwich because I'll still be here doing this. Ridiculous, man. Damn it. Right, you know what? I might have to stick these two bolts in here to guide it. It's the only way. It's the only way. My neighbor across the street's going. Yeah, that's Henry. He's talking to himself again. I'm not talking to myself. I'm talking to 2,200 subscribers. I'm about ready to throw this off a cliff and just go back inside and watch TV. I'm about to. But I'm not. Because I have videos to make. Alright. I think I got it, guys. I finally think I've got it. Go in! Alright. I'm just uh, looking at it again. I'm double checking. Triple checking. Looking at the, I think I got it. And of course I still have this breather hose that needs to be connected. Damn it, unbelievable. Gotta be a contortionist to get that in there. Breather hose is in, and here I go. Into the engine block I go. I'm not going in all the way yet. I'm going to wiggle this around a little. That's why I didn't want to go all the way in.
fuel, breather hose, Try out that uh, throttle and see. Uh huh? It works. See this part right here? This little lever right there is a choke. Look right there. Look right there. Yep, this thing closes the choke, so watch. Pushing the lever, lifts up, that's choke. This is off choke, full throttle. All right, now it should run better. Okay, I just put gas in it, and I took the fuel shut off off, so it's now flowing with fuel, hopefully. There are no leaks so far. I'm just going to start and see what happens. the lowest idle right there. Doesn't surge. That carb uh, clean did it, you know. It doesn't surge anymore, and uh, I have to adjust that idle screw there for the uh, idle. Runs pretty good, except I think that uh, transmission's shot.
I'm not looking forward to taking that apart either. This thing starts one pole. baffles underneath are loose because I took off the uh, covers to mess with the transmission. Um, so the transmission kind of wants to work, but uh, we need to address why uh, the um, wheels don't go backwards now. So unfortunately, while the engine now runs good and uh, we've got all the cables worked out, still have to check out what's up with the why it doesn't go backwards. That's a pain. So I'm uh, pretty pleased with uh, how it's going so far. Remember, all we had was a deck, nothing else, right? We put the motor back, sorry, we put the engine back on, right? We did a comprehensive carb clean that now the engine runs nice, smooth. Uh, we fixed the blade adapter, it was all bent out of shape. Uh, I banged the drive pulley back into shape as well. Uh, we replaced the Brake, brake cable with another brake cable. We attached the throttle cable to it. Um, I still need to decide whether or not I'm going to take the cables off of the uh, caster wheel lock, position lock. We need to, in my next episode, we will be finding out exactly why the self-propelled doesn't work well um, and also why it doesn't go backwards. Right. So I think that that's going to entail complete removal of the transmission, which I'm not looking forward to, believe me, all right? Um, but we know that the bagger now fits in here, so this thing now has a bagger. At the very least, right, we have a nice commercial grade caster wheel Honda mower with a bagger, right? Um, Self-propelled, we don't know. At the very least, if it doesn't work, if the, if the transmission's shot, I'm going to gut it, gut the gearbox, so that this just free rolls. So it'll be a push, zero-turn, caster wheel, Honda Molar with a bagger. Anyway, oh, I've spent a long time with this, and I'm not surprised. Every time I work on a Honda, I know it's going to be complicated, I know it's going to be a pain in the ass, and I know it's going to take up several days. You can't fix a Honda in one hour. You just can't. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey guys, support my channel. Buy a sticker. Also, follow me on Instagram at Mowers Blowers. Check out my website, MowersBlowers.com. See you guys on my next project. Have a great day.